Here are the answers to the mental math. Hope you did well. If you were not sure how to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, I'll go over that in a second. Uh, if I can remember, I will hopefully have done it in class. So, here we are with letter A, 100 winds with the negative, so it's going to be a negative, and if you take 72 away from 100, you get 28, so negative 28. 25 times 25 is 625, so now let's put two decimal places in there, so we have 6.25, and then we have 10 to the 6 plus 6, 10 to the 12th. All right, this one, um, you might have gotten stumped a little bit on that, and that's okay. Uh, I haven't really shared this very clearly, but when you're doing proportions, sometimes what we can do is you take the cross product, 60 times 1.5, so you take the cross product and divide by the third number. So we would do, it's kind of goes, it's diagonal, 1.5 times 60 divided by 100. 1.5 times 60 divided by 100 and that'll give you your missing number. So 1.5 times 60 is one and a half times 60, which is 60 plus half of 60. So one and a half times 60 is 90. So now we have 90 over 100, which is 9 tenths, and that's where I got this, 0.9. So 1.5 times 60 divided by 100. Do that in your head, you're gonna get your Y. Okay, converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. Here's the formula. You take your Celsius um, degrees, multiply it by 9 fifths, which is the same as taking your Celsius, divide by 5, multiply by 9, add 32. Divide by 5, multiply by 9, add 32. So it would also, you could take your Celsius, divide by 5, multiply by 9, add 32. Okay, so we have. 25 degrees Celsius. So you put 25 divided by 5 is 5 times 9 is 45 plus 32 is 77. Okay, so we did 25 divided by 5 times 9 plus 32 and we get 77. All right, 8 times 2 and 3 fourths is 8 times 2 is 16 and then 3 fourths of 8 is 6. So it's 16 plus 6. Okay, 50% more than 60. Okay, well 50% of 60 is 30. So 30 more than 60 is 90. That's how we do those. All right, now we're going to talk, in, talk about the volume of a right solid. And so it's important to know the formula. And it is as followed. Volume of a right solid equals area of the base times the height. Volume of a right solid is equal to the area of the base times 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 the height. The height. Volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is equal to the area of the base times 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 the height. The height. Volume of a right solid is equal to the area of the base times 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 the height. The height. Volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is it is it volume of a right solid is equal to the area of the base times 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 the height. The height. Volume of a right solid is equal to the area of the base times times. So what, the reason I have a B here, a big B, is usually the big um, letters means area of the base, okay? A little B would be the length of a base in other formulas. So a big B, a capital B, means area of base times height. So if you have a rectangular solid like we have here, if the base is a rectangle, then it would be length times width times height. What if the base was a triangle, like this? Then you would have to do one half base times height times uh, height again. So you've got two different heights in that, and we'll talk about one of those on the next page. If you have a cylinder here, your area of the base would be pi r squared times the height of your figure, okay? 
So let's look into why that is. We have this five, it's five across, three deep, and two high. So it's a five by three by two um, rectangular solid here made out of sugar cubes. Let's pretend, because anything made out of sugar is more fun. And as you can tell, one, if we cut, if we took the top layer off, the top layer would, the area, or sorry, yeah, the area of the top layer would be a 5 um, times 3, right? 15, and you can even count that. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So we have a, the top layer is 15, and so that's the area of the base, right? And then the height there, it's too high, so it would be 15 times 2 because there's two, two rows of it. All right, so again, how we would write that is volume equals area of base times height, and because we have a rectangular solid, we would go length times width times height, and then the length was 5. The width and the height, it always depends on how you're looking at your picture, so it really doesn't matter all these numbers are interchangeable as long as you have a 5 by 3 by 2. Okay. If it was standing up, your width and height might change places, and that's okay. In fact, the picture in the book has this, this picture sitting on, on the, this would be the bottom right here. So it all depends on your view. So 5 times 3 times 2, like we said, 15 times 2. So there should be 30 sugar cubes in this thing. So it would be units cubed. And in this case, let's pretend these were meters. So what we say is meters cubed because we have, one way to look at it is we have five, let me write this way, five centimeters times three centimeters times two centimeters. Okay? So I kind of ran up there. So if you multiply all the digits, you get 30. And then you have centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. So one way to look at it is this, right? Three of those things. So how we shorten that is centimeters cubed. So when we're doing three-dimensional, this is, and we're doing volume, it's, it's going to be a cubic or cubed or to the third power, okay? All right, as we look down here, we have a right square prism. And these are all um, a right triangular prism and a right circular prism, okay? Um, this said square, actually cross out square, because the picture I gave you is actually a rectangular prism, so right rectangular. The one in the book is square, but mine is not. So let's jump into an example. If I have my paper. Here we go. Sorry, I'm a little... All right, example one, find the, okay, this is the same figure, two different views of it, okay? So study that and see how it's just different views. Find the volume of the right triangular prism below. Now when they say right, it means that this thing is not leaning, it's straight up and down, okay? So if you were, all of these angles here, the height is perpendicular to the base. And that's what right uh, prism means, okay? And we are in centimeters, so just to give you, sometimes it helps me to do that because the book doesn't always do that. Okay, um, we're going to find the volume. Okay, so here it is laying down, so to speak, and here it is sitting up. And it's also a right triangular because it's a right triangle, okay? So let's go ahead and use our formula like I said, we always write the formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height. Okay, so now we have a triangle. So in order to, we're going to change that big B into a one half, and it, you could even do it in parentheses so we don't get them confused with the height of the actual um, prism. Okay, so one half base times height then times the height of the prism. Okay, so these H's are two different um, dimensions there. Okay, so we go, which one is the base? Okay, well the base is, my color in the base right here. There's our base. 
and here's our base sitting up. The triangle is the base and you can always tell what your base is because you have two bases um, that are exactly the same. All these other sides are rectangles and so that's definitely not your base. Your bases are the triangles. So here's another base and here's another base and they are actually all the same dimensions. So if we do one half the base times the height. Okay, here one of these is the base and here's a height. Okay, or a base and a height. So one half four times three, there's the area of your triangle, right? And then the height of our cylinder, we see it here, is six. So now we have all the, all the dimensions in our formula and all we have to do is calculate now. So what we need, a half of four is two, two times three is six, six times six is 36. And again, we're doing centimeters cubed. Okay? So the area of the base triangle times the height of your prism. Okay? Let's look at this one. The diameter of this right circular cylinder is 20 centimeters. So from here all the way across is 20 centimeters. Okay? Its height is 25 centimeters. So you can write that in. What is the volume? And leave pi as pi. Well, that's a gift. We love it when they tell us to leave pi as pi. So let's take volume equals area of the base times the height. In this case, our base is a circle. So we use the area of a circle um, formula, which is pi r squared eight times h, which is the height of our prism. Then we plug in what we know. Our radius is not 20. Our radius is actually 10, half of the di diameter. So it's 10 squared, and the height of our prism is 25. Okay, so that is the same. I'm going to slide pi to the end. 100 times 25 times pi is going to be our answer, right? So 25 times 100 is 2,500 pi and we go back to, oh, centimeters cubed. And there is our answer. So as long as you follow the formula, these are actually pretty um, basic, simple, and straightforward. Not easy, but simple, all right? So now you have your practice, so you can go ahead and um, do that and come back and see how, how it worked for you, okay? And look for some mistakes, because I will probably make some. So go ahead and pause the video now and then come back. All right, so we're going to find the volume of each right solid. So again, it's volume equals base times height, area of the base times the height. The area of the base is 1 half 6 times 8. So that's, those are our triangles. So it's 1 half 6 times 8. And then the height of our prism is 12. Now we just calculate it through. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. 24 times 12. I'm going to write it. Okay. And I'm going to do this a shortcut because 24 times 12 is the same as 24 times 10 plus 24 times 2. And I can do that in my head rather than doing long multiplication. 24 times 10 is 240 plus 48. So 240 plus 48. You could have done it the other way. I'm just avoiding um, long multiplication. So what I get here is 288 and we've got centimeters cubed. And there we go. Super fun, right? Okay, I agree. <laughs> and now we've got a few more pictures. Here we have another triangular prism. So we, again, do volume equals area of the base times the height. The area of the base is 1 half, and then the base of this triangle is 10. The height of this triangle is 6, and the height of the prism is 12. And we just calculate that through. Half of, maybe I'm going to do half of, um, I'm going to do this. 
Okay, so now I've got 10 times 6 times 6, which is 36 times 10, 360. And everybody's in centimeters, I guess. So centimeters cubed. All right, the next one, area or volume equals area of the base times the height. In this case, it's a circle, so it's pi r squared h, and that's pi. The radius is actually 3 squared times 10. So let's move pi to the end. So it's 9 times 10, 90 pi, and it's centimeters cubed. Okay. This one, again, don't get confused. You got all this stuff, but just follows the same formula. Volume equals area of the base times height. Okay, so this is our base area. How do we find the area of this thing? Well, let's go ahead and maybe cut this into two parts. The area of this piece and this piece is the area of our whole base, right? Well, this piece is a 5 by 3. 3, right? So if this is 3, then we have a 15, right? So we'll, if you were going to write this all out, you would do 5 times 3 plus, we even do it like this, and then this one, if this is 3, then this must be 4, and this is 2, so it's 4, 4 times 2 times the height of the prism, times 10. Okay, so the area of the base is 15 plus 8, and 15 plus 8 is um, 22, times 10, so we get 220 centimeters cubed. Okay, so 15 plus 8 times 10, area of the base times the height. Even if it's laying down, that's still the height, okay? The height is made up of a bunch of rectangles coming around the lateral area, okay? So, last one is a cylinder. So, volume equals area of the base times height. In this case, it's a circle. So, that's pi r squared times the height. And, again, they let us leave pi as pi. Our radius is 1 squared times 10. So that was kind of nice. It's 1 times 1 times 10. So our answer is just 10 pi centimeters cubed. And there you have it. Not a long video. You're welcome. And I hope you enjoyed that. Write the formula, fill in what you know, calculate the answer, and that is it.